Hello friends, welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. So I'm back to working on her bedroom projects. Got a little sidetracked, a little, little bit. So what I'm gonna work on right now is actually a vintage lampshade that I found at a garage sale up the road from me. Super excited about it. It's apparently extremely expensive, typically speaking, but I was able to get it for a steal. They wanted it, um, they wanted, $55 for it. And I was not gonna pay that for a 12 year old's bedroom. I walked away from it and this is a funny story because I walked away from it and I came home and I was just, it was bothering me. I was like, I really want that light for my daughter's bedroom. I really want it. And I was like, maybe I should just go back and ask if they'll take anything less for it. So I get back up there. I'm in the parking lot. I'm thinking about what I'm doing here because I'm not willing to spend $55 on it, so. But I really, really want it. I really wanted it bad. <laughs> so I'm sitting in the car and I try to get out and my car does this thing where when the battery is low, someone apparently had left a door open all night long and so it drained part of my battery. So when my battery is low, it locks you in the car and if you try to get out or try to unlock it, it makes the alarm go off and there is no way to turn it off. So I'm sitting in the car, locked in. My alarm is going off. I'm pretty sure the entire area thought that I was trying to steal my own car. And I'm just sitting there like, really? Really? So, so I was like, okay, whatever. So it stops and I'm like, how do I get out of the car without making this thing go off again? Again, try to get out, locked in, alarm starts going off again. So two times in a row. So I'm sitting in the car for probably 15 minutes while this alarm is going off in the parking lot. Finally, I get back out and I'm walking back in, about ready to find somebody to talk to about this lampshade, and I hear one of the women talking to a customer, saying, oh yeah, you know, if you see some things that are higher priced, it's because they're worth a lot more money than that, so we're actually asking a lot less than what they're really worth. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is like the third sign in a row that I'm just supposed to go home. God is trying to tell me something here. <laughs> so I did, I went home and I was like, you know what? Okay, if I meant to have it, it will still be there at the end of the day, and I know that they work with people on prices at that point. So I'm like, okay, it's a sign from God, I'm just gonna move on with my life even though I really wanted it. So I get there at the end of the day and they had marked it down from 55 to 25. And I was like, thank you, Lord. Cause I said to myself, I think I would pay 35, but I wouldn't pay more than that. So it really does help to know exactly how much you'll pay for something. So it, it helps you not overspend on things. So anyway, all that to say, it is a um, Capiz, Capiz shell lampshade. And I looked them up on eBay and sold prices are anywhere from 150 to 300 dollars. And most of them did not have this piece. It was missing. So um, yeah, it's beautiful. It is a lampshade, a large one, and I want to turn it into a clickable lamp that hangs over the top of her bed. So I went to the hardware store and I'm gonna try this out because I could not find like any information online about what I needed. So I bought this, it says fixture. So I think that this is what I need. And then I bought the swag light kit, which comes with the chain and the wiring and it has the little clicky clicky on it. And it even has the stuff to attach it to the ceiling inside of it. This is about $20. So I'm already into the light for about 50 bucks total. So much better than like 75 to 100 though. So I've got those things. Let's just get into this and see if I can figure it out. Because if I can figure it out, then obviously it's gonna be a really simple thing that you could probably figure out as well. All right, so here's the interesting part. That goes away. Okay. So for the fixture parts, porcelain keyless socket adapter kit. And I don't know if this is what I need. I hope it's what I need. But in typical hardware style, I couldn't find anybody around the area to help me. So. So it comes with this, but I think I'm not going to use that because this one comes with the, oh uh, heavens. They both came with that. And you couldn't tell what all came with what. So, 
These are for the ceiling. And the hooks that it came with for the ceiling. And these are the directions here. It's excellent. Oh good, they have fixtures below. So this is for if there is a stud there, you just add these to this. But if there aren't, then you add these and this. This pops up into the ceiling like this. So it goes like this, up into a hole, and then when it gets up far enough, it goes like that and it won't come back down and then you can see how that works. And then washers. I'm not really sure what that's for. We'll figure that out. And then here is the plug-in and the wire. I don't have it all put together, but it works. Sweet. Now let me undo it all and then show you how to do it for real. And the inside of this are two screws and you're gonna want to take this part off and it makes it so much simpler for this whole process. And on every plug, there's going to be a hot wire and a neutral wire. And it's kind of hard with this because they are both copper. So there's gonna be a smooth side and a ribbed side. The ribbed side is going to be the neutral cord. Also, there will be writing on the hot cord and you can also look at the plug itself the wider one is gonna be the neutral and then follow that wire all the way down because you do want to get that right. Otherwise you risk electrical <laughs> issues and possibly um, electrocution or being shocked. There are two different color screws. The hot wire goes onto the gold, the neutral goes onto the silver. So I just stripped the wires back a little bit more, did a little bit of the loop and then tightened them down. And then I installed this silver piece back on that way. So, and now it works. Just plug it in and I'll show it to you. So that was way more headache than it needed to be, honestly. So now I'm going to just, and you wanna be able to thread this down through that because this piece is going to connect to this piece. This will hold all of the weight of the lamp. So it will be sandwiched between there. Okay, <laughs> that took a little bit. Mostly because I, you know, mostly because it's electrical work and you don't really wanna get that wrong. So I was doing all the internet searching to make sure that I was doing it correctly, watching YouTube videos and such, just to make sure that I was getting it right. Because typically speaking, when you are doing wiring, one of the wires will be a different color than the other. In this case, they were not, they're both copper. So even when I stripped back the wire, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. So I just wanted to be sure that I was getting the neutral and the neutral and the hot and the hot. You don't wanna put those backwards because it'll basically electrify any of the metal parts on the lamp. So anybody that touches the lamp or the light bulb or whatever could get shocked and or electrocuted. So it's no small thing. <laughs> so basically you just want to make sure and look, look how pretty it is. Look how beautiful that is. Beautiful. Okay. I'm gonna show you one more time, just a little bit closer. So, you know, see the two sides? You have a bigger side and a smaller side. So the bigger side is the neutral. Therefore, you can follow that big side and you know that this side, the grooved side, there is the ever so slight groove on it. 
and the other side, the hot side, is smooth. The hot side also has writing on it, but it's really hard for you to see, and it's not on the entire cord. So that's lovely. You can see it just right. I don't even know if you can see it. It's so hard to see. Probably not. You probably can't see it. I can see it, but it's really hard to see. So I think the easiest way to tell is to actually look at the cord. And hopefully in whatever instance you're using this in, you have this part of the cord. So I would just follow the large one, which is the neutral, all the way down so that you know which wire is the neutral wire and then make sure to use like a black Sharpie or something like that to mark the hot wire so that you are not mixing them up. And then, on the inside of the socket, there is a gold screw and a silver screw. So the hot goes to the gold and the neutral goes to the silver. It really wasn't a difficult process. I just wanted to make sure that I was getting it right because of all the things I already mentioned. It is completely done. I just need to find the center of her ceiling by her bed and then install it basically. So let's go ahead and see if we can see if we can figure that out. I'm gonna go ahead and install this chain. I'm not really sure. I guess the shorter chain came in case you didn't want to use it very long. But I know for sure. Oh. And you know what? I bet you're supposed to chain it through this first. So now that I'm a professional, I get to do it all over again and you get the benefit of watching me do this. <laughs> Hopefully you have better tools than I do because I'm working with not the best pliers here. I'm thinking it's probably best to put that one on first and then thread the wire through that way, backwards. That's how it's seeming in my head, at least. Man, these things are serious. I'm gonna go five, one, two, three, four, five, and up.
this is 57 and a half, about 58, so that is 29 inches. Ten inches, so this would be where the should it be like this where the shade ends. Eight inches. What's oh, happening back? Twenty-nine inches. Son of a gun. Of course, the only one I have at the moment is the one that doesn't work well. You'll be back again. Eight inches. Oh. All right. Now I'm gonna go measure the circumference of the shade so that I can get a precise like center for where I want to drill my hole. So the circumference of the lampshade is 18 inches, so center is 9. So I'm going to add onto this one. It will be 17 inches from the wall total. And then I want to make sure that that is 29 inches. Supposedly, that's going to be my hanging light. I almost feel like I should test it just to make sure before I drill a hole into the ceiling. That will then need to be patched if I get it wrong. Of course, I need a drill bit. Moving around in these tiny little rooms is really obnoxious. So I prepared my little hooks because I know this is how it's going to go. So one to put it in, a, in its initial position and then one to carry the cord over to where the plug-in is. So it'll probably be over there where it's close for her to be able to reach it at the end of the bed. So that will hold the rest of the cord and then the rest, the excess cord will drape down to the side. So I need two of them and I know that this is how it's going to go. So. I need a drill bit that is about that size right there. I don't think I have a big enough one, so this sucker's just gonna squish itself in there. It's gonna do it. I'm gonna make it fit. So I should have had it tightened more. So I am pulling it down while I twist it to tighten it. Look how awesome it looks. It's perfect. It's perfect. When lights go out. 